Hello world, my name is John and this is uh, part 7 of my crazy story, crazy life story. Today is February 20th, 2018 and uh, I got literally nothing else to do than uh, just record these videos because uh, I am unemployed, uh, I don't have any money, I am flat broke, my house is still for, uh, under contract in, in uh, Fayetteville, North Carolina, United States, and I am located in Czechia, city named uh, Havizov, and I'm just hanging out at my uh, sister's uh, studio uh, apartment, yeah, uh, because I don't have any money, my, my sister is basically just feeding me and I'm sleeping here uh, with her on, on one uh, foldable uh, sofa, just surviving. I'm just surviving and hoping for, uh, for my house to sell. Uh, I have a closing on uh, April 2nd, so it's still gonna be agonizing month and a half for me, just waiting and waiting if if everything goes well. I'm trying to kill the time uh, with, you know, exercising, working out or uh, running and uh, recording these videos. I'm also cooking a lot and I don't know, I, uh, sometimes I go just for a walk uh, in, in the downtown. I mean, the downtown uh, is right here, right there. There's a downtown of uh, Havizov, Havizov city. <laughs> and uh, in my last video, I was uh, uh, talking about my crazy trip to Vienna, Austria to see uh, to see a girl that I fell in love with uh, back in 2008. You know, I, I met her online. Uh, she was a uh, fresh 17 year old girl and uh, I was uh, 33 at the time at that time and uh, you know there is 16 years uh, of uh, age difference between us and uh, I acknowledge that I know that uh, but you know ever ever since the first moment we started talking I always had that feeling you know that that we you know we clicked we had that instant connection and uh, I remember till this day the first sentence I wrote her uh, I wrote her uh, hello girl I, I know I'm I'm too old uh, you know to be talking to you <laughs> it was it was on one of the Czech uh, dating sites you know and I, I and I wrote her I, I know I'm too old but I just wanted to say you know how beautiful uh, your hair and your smile is you know <coughs> or something like that and uh, and she wrote me immediately she wrote me back like come on man what are you talking about you are a uh, young age that's <laughs> uh, that's not old <laughs> so that was the first conversation with her and uh, you know, I felt really comfortable with her and I, I hope she felt comfortable with me and we spent, ever since that day, we spent, you know, hours and hours, you know, just chatting uh, online, you know, all day, you know, we've been typing, <laughs> typing something all day and I felt so good. I always felt so good when I, when I spoke with her and uh, and at that time I was you know in the United States and I just uh, started uh, uh, a business contractor business and I had so much work and I was under so much pressure and so much uh, there was so much going on in my life and talking to her you know was helping me ever since you know to be able to handle all that pressure so uh, and ever since you know i've been trying to figure out how i how how to do how to make it happen you know to meet with her you know but you know it uh 
this you know this everyday talking you know kind of disappeared and uh and she started dating somebody yeah mostly because of that she started dating somebody so uh so i decided you know to to stop talking to her you know because she was in in relationship and uh many different things happened you know in four years but anyway later on we got you know talking again and like in 2012 you know four years later you know i uh i asked her you know invited her if she wants to come and see me in in new york but uh you know she decided to come but that turned out to be uh to uh, be a, a big fail and i'm gonna talk about this later on i, I don't really want to talk about it now i just want to fast forward to uh to uh recent days uh i just want to wanted to like give uh give you a little hint of uh, what's going on between me and her and since that time you know she moved on and she doesn't really see me as as uh, something uh, romantic or relationship relationship wise or anything like that she moved on and she's been with relationship uh, with you know another man for a pretty long time and uh, anyway i just wanted to make my dream come true and i wanted to see her regardless of whatever the situation is between me and her so i decided to go there a uh, day before christmas the last day <coughs> to surprise her it was kind of awkward moment but i am very grateful for that a uh, very short moment about you know I, I i saw her for about 10 minutes but you know it was my dream came came true and uh and it was basically the best day so far you know uh in my life and uh and I will always, always remember that. And I will always remember her face and that, you know, expression when she saw me. And, uh, you know, it was a special moment for me. Anyway, <clears throat> after I walked her to that place, uh, I got on the train. Uh, I, I had little complications with that to, to get back on the train because I didn't have, I didn't purchase the ticket in, in advance. Actually, yeah, actually, uh, before I said I, I had a, I had a book ticket, but I, I didn't ha have a book ticket. I actually had to purchase the ticket uh, on on Bahnhof uh, Vienna train station, and they told me there is no uh, uh, seats left on that train, which was kind of weird. So I f I had to find a solution how to get on the train, and I just got on the train and found 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 a seat. Uh, that that was that was reserved you know way after my destination so i don't know why they keep the seats empty all all that uh all that uh way until until it get uh used you know after i get off the train so i figured i i can sit there so when when the uh so then, and then i went online on my phone i got on wi-fi got on the phone and uh and I purchased the ticket uh, even b before the, the train uh, attendant came, I had a ticket. So I got back home, you know, got some sleep and, you know, I, I uh, recorded her another voice match message uh, the, the very next morning, you know, how I, you know, appreciated that she let me in and she didn't kick me out. And, uh, and uh, I'm, I'm very grateful for that and uh, that she, that she's, uh, talked with me and uh, you know I didn't want to make her feel un uncomfortable you know I, all I wanted is, was just to see her you know after all that all those years and just catch up uh, on old times or, or whatever just just talk in general just you know just casual just you know just have fun or whatever no pressure no stress you know just friendly friendly talk I'm, I'm not a stalker I'm, I'm not you know any of that I'm just I'm just crazy about that woman and and, and that's it that's all you know I let it be for for uh, many years and 
I, I let it be, you know, for her, so she, she doesn't feel under uh, any kind of pressure from from me, and I'm I'm trying to, you know, handle handle uh, my feelings to towards her, and uh, you know, I just keep it inside, and uh, you know, my my brain keeps telling me, don't do it, you know, just uh, fuck it, <laughs> don't worry about it anymore. She's moved on. She doesn't love me or anything. She doesn't have any feeling for me. But, you know, my brain is telling me, you know, just leave it be, don't worry about it anymore. Just, you know, she's got her own life and you gotta, you gotta do your own thing. But, you know, my body, even though I'm trying to convince myself, you know, I'm not in love with her or whatever. I still love that girl. I mean, regardless what I do, what I tell myself, I mean, I'm trying to force myself to not love her or not think about her every day. I, st I still do, you know my brain is telling me you know don't do it but my body is is telling me otherwise <laughs> you know my body is telling me otherwise and i can't i can't really change it i can't really influ influence that I, I mean i can find somebody else i can find another girl or whatever but uh i always will in the future feel that we have some kind of special bond and you know we, we have some kind of special connection and i mean i can't really change it i mean I, I mean i'm trying i'm trying hard but it doesn't work i i can't help it it doesn't work so anyway so i i i, I recorded her and and then she recorded me later on that day i think she was uh, traveling to Czechia, <coughs> Czechia to celebrate christmas and uh, and then uh, during the Christmas, I was trying to kind of stay in touch with her because I wanted to see her again. And I wanted to see if she if she want want to see me like after Christmas, you know, after the new New Year's, uh, and so on. Uh, and and also, this is not actually the main reason I wanna uh, the main thing I wanna talk about right now. The main thing still is my E two. Uh, investors visa application right so I was hoping for my e2 visa to be uh, uh, taken care of um, before Christmas all right but that didn't happen on on November uh, 31st I uh, I mailed uh, in an entire folder whole folder of uh, paperwork that was required together with the visa application and I paid uh, $205 for that all right so what I gathered was uh, papers from uh, all my uh, investment properties in in, in the United States I, I've had a total of eight houses so I had to pull up uh, all the uh, deed records you know they are all publicly accessible so I pulled that up from the internet uh, I downloaded some pictures I, I uh, printed out some uh, tax returns you know I, I put all these records together uh, and arranged it nice nicely I, I uh, composed like a letter saying what I do like uh, I'm an investor I, I flip houses. I'm, I'm doing, you know, modern, beautiful, upscale uh, renovations, and I put uh, included a list of all my houses and and uh, basically that, and I put it all together and and mailed it on November 31st, and and that was Thursday, and so I overnighted it. They had it on Friday. Uh, on I think it was December 1st Friday and uh, and I was waiting they had a uh, uh, two to four weeks to respond back and and give me uh, give me uh, a time and date for the uh, interview in person okay so I was waiting uh, and waiting and I s I wasn't getting any email email from them so I decided to like the last day before Christmas I called them and there's there's two funny guys at the uh, embassy uh, working as receptionist 
one, one of them is gay, I think, and the other one is Polish, uh, speaking Czech, and they, they both uh, sound uh, kind of funny when you talk to them. So, uh, so this, this time was the Polish guy, and, and he told me uh, that, uh, that he's going to check in it, check into it, or, or something like that, or, or that I should call later, you know, after Christmas, uh, you know, and all I have to do is just to wait for them to, uh, to send me a confirmation email for the interview. So I was waiting again after Christmas and and still nothing so the last business day before before the new years i called him again and and this time the the gay guy picked up and uh and he told me to not call again uh because all i have to do is just to wait that they don't want to uh, bother them with with uh, any kind of kinds of requests and they, they have you know their own uh, uh rules and they, they will uh, email me or whatever so it's been five weeks you know I celebrated Christmas at the uh, at my uh, at my hostel and uh, with with local <laughs> uh, uh, with another people that, that live there at, uh, like uh, retired people sick people uh, poor people you know we, we, we uh, we did. Uh, we baked. Uh, 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 we fried uh, uh, the, the schnitzels, uh, pork schnitzels, and and we cooked uh, uh, the the potato salad and drank some eggnog and and that's how I celebrated Christmas with <laughs> all those people at the hostel and uh, and uh, then I I, I was. Uh, a few times I went to local Christmas uh, market which was pretty nice too e every day every night they had a, a, a kind of entertainment uh, for for the people like uh, f and for the kids they had uh, some you know entertainment uh, shows for the kids and there were local celebrities uh, Czech celebrities so I, I, I went to see one of them, Eva, Eva Farna, I went to see her, uh, and then uh, I bought some fireworks for the, uh, for the New Year's, so I, I, I did that, I fired those, <laughs> blew those up, and then I went here to see fireworks, and funny funny thing is that my sister, where I'm at right now, she was not aware at that time that I'm here. Uh, I wasn't planning on contacting her until I get my visa uh, done. So uh, she was looking at the fireworks, at the same fireworks that I was looking at. She was looking at the fireworks out of her window. And uh, I was looking at the fireworks from over there, from the square of... Uh, uh, Republic or whatever it's called <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah at, at, the, at the New Year's Eve uh, we were we were actually looking at the same fireworks but but sh uh, she didn't know about me and uh, uh, that's, that's kind of funny <laughs> uh, so uh, after New Year's uh, I called the embassy again and 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 the gay guy told me uh, that I should write them an email like don't call again just just write an email so I wrote an email to the embassy and they emailed me back to to write another email somewhere else so I did just that and within a day or so uh, they wrote me back a confirmation email for for the appointment at the uh, American Embassy in Prague on uh, Friday January 12th okay and it was like a, a week uh, it was like a week out all right so that whole week man I was so nervous I was trying to get you know distracted so I don't think about it you know because 
the January 12th, I knew it's gonna be, for me, it's gonna be like a turning point in my life. I could either go up, you know, get the, the investor's visa and I'll be able to go back to uh, United States and continue with my investing business, with my real estate uh, investing and I could have legitimate business I could like really uh, grow and expand and it, it could probably you know just you know take off and I could uh, fulfill you know all my goals and and uh, my I could use you know all my potential that I have I could you know really use all my experience and, and all that and I could grow and and everything or if I don't get that visa I'm just gonna get stuck here in check with no money <laughs> uh, you know broke no place to stay no job and that's exactly what happened well, let me get to it you know? <laughs> okay so the whole week I was very nervous because because I knew that uh, on January 12th my life my my entire future is gonna get decided right there right then okay so I was trying to get distracted I, I worked out I, I was going out running uh, was watching TV and movies you know trying to uh, you know, get you know different thoughts than that you know and I, but I still couldn't you know like sleep at night and and my girl Dominique <laughs> my friend Dominique uh, I, I think I wrote, wrote her uh, like New Year's Eve uh, 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 wish a note but she didn't write me back uh, she basically just didn't uh record me anything she didn't write me this entire time so it was like over three weeks i i, I haven't heard from her again like through the whole christmas new years and uh, un until the january 12th i didn't hear from her all right well that's a that's a obvious sign that's a clear sign that she doesn't want to you know talk to me but i i want to talk to her so what do i do so anyway i wanted to talk to her and and i thought on on the uh january 11th when i was trying to fall asleep and get some sleep before i get up uh early in the morning to get on on the train to prague uh i decided to call her on on a facetime because uh, i needed to you know talk to somebody just to calm me down so i can get some sleep or whatever and I didn't really expect she's gonna pick up because usually when I call her she doesn't keep pick up because she always got something else to do uh, you know she she's pretty busy girl you know she's always doing something she's a very social person and she's always you know with her girlfriends or or doing something going out or whatever hanging out and I didn't expect her to pick up and you know, I was uh, I had uh, I I had my li lights turned off and I was in the dark. You know, I was lying in the bed trying to get sleep and I and I dialed her and and she she answered. She picked up and I saw her <laughs> on a FaceTime and and she's like, "What's up? And anything happening?" <laughs> and I'm like, "No, nothing's happening. You know, I'm just I just can't sleep. You know." And she she showed me her. She was hanging out with one of her girlfriends and she showed me her girlfriend on, on on facetime video and i'm like oh i see <laughs> it's it's not the right moment moment to to call so i, I i'm not gonna bother you and and she's like turn, turn on the light and i'm like the light is broken <laughs> the light is i didn't really want to turn the light on because i was like uh you know in, in bed and i was trying to get i i, I didn't want to you know get uh wake up I, I, I didn't want to wake up too much you know I wanted to I, I wanted the opposite I wanted to get asleep 
and she goes like turn the light on I wanted to uh, sh show you uh, I wanted you to show uh, to my uh, girlfriend like I wanted to introduce you I wanted to introduce you to my girlfriend and and so I, I turned on the light and and she told her like uh, I was in America and I just got back and I'm going to Prague and and she's like hi <laughs> uh, it was kind of awkward moment too so I told them hey, listen uh, I'm not gonna bother you or whatever I'm just I just need to go get some sleep uh, because I, I'm getting up early in the and etc and um, so we hung up and I got a couple of hours of sleep and and I woke up I got up at like 4 30 in the morning I ate a lot I got a coffee and, and I got on the train to Prague that uh, trip like was uh, really uh, uh, agonizing for me too uh, I really thought I'm gonna pass out on that train I mean I, I, I thought I'm gonna get some sleep, you know, get relaxed and you know, usually when uh, when the train, you know, ride, when you ride on the train, you fall asleep, but I couldn't fell, uh, fall asleep and I was nervous all, all the way to Prague, I was really nervous and then I got to, uh, I got to Prague, I got to the embassy on time and I was like literally the last person that got there. So by the time I got there, the the waiting room was was full of people. Uh, you have to go like upstairs, and they have these you know windows, and and uh, I was literally like the last person they got there, and uh, and I was the last person leaving there. So they let me wait like three hours. It was like one o'clock afternoon, and I was the last person. Uh, turn and uh, and that's that's when everything turned to shit you know so he called me he called my name called me to the window the the American consulate uh, I think he was a little bit younger than me maybe in his 30s and uh, it was one of those nerd nerd looking guys you know and uh, and he goes like, uh, well, tell me something uh, about your uh, business. And the file, my file, the entire file that I mailed there, they never saw it. I was waiting six weeks. I was waiting six weeks for this. And they never saw my file. This guy... He just put it you know on his desk and he told me I haven't seen this yet I just saw it now and he just he for the first time he saw it it was in front of me he opened it and he just glanced at it so all the work and money I invested in it uh, was did not serve the purpose at all I mean he didn't read any of that. He just glanced at it. He couldn't focus on it. And he goes like, well, uh, I haven't seen it yet. I'm just looking at it now. Just tell me uh, something about your business. So I told him uh, in about three sentences uh, what I do. Uh, and, um, and then he asked me the magical question. When was the last time you... Uh, you entered the United States so I told him it was in 2014 uh, I mean 2004 2004 was the last time and and then he asked me when was the when did you leave when when did you return you know because if you overstayed longer than one year uh, uh, there's 10 year uh, bar uh, you know you're gonna get a 10 year ban and you won't be able to return to the United States so I was thinking for about five ten seconds about what I'm gonna tell him if I'm gonna lie or, or, or tell the truth uh, and because if, if I lied I, I would be risking you know getting 
getting banned from the United States for life. And I couldn't really lie because he had all my information in front of him and all my houses were, you know, after the year I would have to tell him. I would have to tell him 2007. Yeah, I would have to tell him I've returned 2007 plus 10 years is 2017. And that would make me, you know, uh, out of uh, out of out of the risk that I would uh, get banned. All right, the ten years would already passed, and uh, I could, you know, probably move on and get the visa. But I'm not the type of person who lies. That's that's the first thing, and I I couldn't risk it. And so, and I was kind of hoping that he's gonna be conservative to it and that he's gonna appreciate my honesty but it didn't work so i told him 2017 and he's like okay so you overstayed uh, so right now you 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 will get the 10-year bar but there is a waiver that i could probably use and 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 I told him that I would I would really appreciate it, you know, if if there is something if, if that can be done about it, so I can so I can get that visa. So he asked me to go sit, and uh, uh, and I saw him. He's making a phone phone call somewhere. So in about ten minutes, he called me back, and, and he goes like, uh, "I'm sorry, uh, I can't uh, I can't use that waiver." Uh, uh, you're gonna have to sign me this uh, ten-year bar, and uh, I cannot approve uh, your visa. And you know, you can you can uh, go to America for the next ten years, can't. And uh, and I apologize, and I really appreciate your uh, you, you've been honest with me and all that. Man, I since that moment I I didn't say anything else except goodbye. <laughs> Or, th or thanks or whatever so I signed the paper and I left and at that moment I knew that my life just turned into a fucking shit and that's where I'm at right now I am a neck deep in shit literally if if my contract doesn't close on April 2nd, if something goes wrong with that contract and, and the buyers decide to not go ahead with the purchase of my house, I'm fucked for good because I won't have money uh, to pay for my property taxes yeah, because I think I mentioned that before. But anyway, I'm late on my property taxes. I was supposed to pay on January 5th. And I emailed the tax tax office in Fayetteville if, if they can wait or make me some kind of payment arrangements. But I can't even make the payments because I don't have any money for the payments. So I, I literally depend on selling the house so I don't lose the house towards uh, you know the foreclosure in foreclosure towards the taxes uh, so I had to sell it if I don't sell it I'm fucked I will lose the house because I don't have twenty one hundred dollars uh, I won't be able to pay for my storage unit where all my uh, uh, stuff is including uh, my computer and my hard drives with all my pictures and videos from my entire life including America and the life before and, and everything my entire archives is in there I mean I don't have anything on me except like very recent uh, pictures and videos since I, I left since like uh, October no November 2017 so I, I only have pictures and videos of my uh, last four months of life and the rest of my life is in America so if, if I don't sell that house 
I am fucked. So this this is fucked up, and uh, this situation is very uncomfortable for me. I'm under under lots of pressure. I mean, I got lots of tension. I don't have any job. I'm trying to apply for job, and nobody wants to give me any job because because I I got literally nothing to put in my resume other than other than what I did illegally in the United States for the last 18 years. Uh, and and this is this is really crazy. I mean, I still didn't realize how big of a life change it is for me from being on top, having my own you know cash about three hundred fifty thousand dollars in cash, and investing in real estate and doing all these things that involve this you know like I was doing my own thing I was my own boss you know I employ people I, I give job to people and now I am the one that's unemployed and who is trying to find a job and work for somebody else I mean this is I I, I cannot even mentally do that I mean I am my mindset is different I can't I can't work for other people and listen to other other people other people's bullshit you know I mean my mind is set to to be a boss and to be the creative uh, mind uh, you know I have lots of ideas I have visions I have you know plans I mean I, my my brain is very complex. I have, you know, I'm cons constantly thinking, you know, and uh, if I don't sell the house and I, I won't be able to jump back on my train, I mean, I'm going to be fucked up and I'm going to be forced, you know, to, to do things that I have never planned. I mean, I could, I could look at it as uh, some kind of adventure because that's what it is. You know, I am an adventurer. I'm adventurer uh, uh, nat nat nature, so th this is kind of adventure. This is crazy life, you know. With everything that's, go it's it's like a roller coaster, you know, going up and down. You know, one time I'm rich, you know, another time I'm poor, and I don't have any stability in my life, and and it is kind of interesting. And it is making for interesting stories, but while I'm down, I feel like really frustrated, and it it fucking sucks, man. And that's that's what's eventually gonna make me again to utilize my my forces and get back up. You know what I mean? So, as the saying says, uh, nine nine times you fall, ten times you get up, and that's what I'm doing my entire life, you know, and this is another uh, case of my uh, roller coaster, roller coaster ride. And all I'm hoping for is, you know, uh, to to be able to to turn this around and uh, get on top again, you know. So I'll be talking about it more in my in my next video. So this is it for now and. My name is John and this is my crazy life story.